first thing to say is we're going to be talking about the internet and about how your websites uh, might convert. We think about the metaverse and what we need to think about that. Is that going to change everything? So, uh, but it's worthwhile pointing out at, right at the start that I am not a technical expert. I'm a psychologist. Uh, so I look at the internet from a psychological perspective. So my day job is I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Buckingham, where I run uh, two degrees in business. Um, so I'm the program director for those two degrees, but I spend my research time looking at the psycho. So I'm a business psychologist. So I look at how people, consumers, people use the internet and uh, sometimes discover that businesses make assumptions about how people use the internet and that doesn't do their business any good. And it's worthwhile kind of prefacing all my remarks by saying right up front that almost every business that uses the internet fails to use the internet in any meaningful way. Now, you're going to tell me that your business uh, is su succeeding and achieving meaningful things. That's fantastic. Um, but a lot of businesses out there are struggling with the internet. And when we get the metaverse thrown in on top of all this, I'm afraid it's going to make it even worse. So what I'd like to do as we go through, I'm going to talk for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever. Um, but feel free to interrupt me. Feel free to ask questions. I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to ask you a question in a minute. Um, and I'm going to expect you to, to talk to me. Um, you know, let's make this a conversation as best we can. I've got some slides to go through um, and some things to point out to you and a series of important psychological principles that you need to consider to convert more people who come to your website, to engage more people, to make sure you do more business. I'm making the assumption, um, and tell me if I'm wrong with this assumption, I'm making the assumption that you want to use the internet to help you grow your business and do more business and make more profit. Is that right, wrong? Yeah, so some thumbs up, yep. So that's my my underlying assumption in everything I'm gonna say uh, today. Um, first off though, who here, anybody want to stick their hand up and go, yeah, I'm really, really succeeding. I convert almost everybody who comes to my website. I really don't need to know anymore. Everything is perfect. Nobody putting their hand up to that. Okay, uh, that's fine. Um, because if I ask that question of Google or Facebook or Amazon, they wouldn't put their hand up either. Um, because there's a, still a lot to do for everyone. Uh, however, where are you in your internet journey, as it were? Who, what struggles are you having? Who, what would you like to be able to do? Uh, what would you like the internet to be able to achieve for you? Um, anybody want to give me a an answer to that? Switch your microphone on and say hello and. Um, tell me what it is that you would like to achieve. What is it that the internet isn't doing for you? If there's more to do to grow your business, what is it you need to do? Um, got by Margot. I, I should imagine yeah. it's one is uh, sales or get clients. Yeah. And two is get the message across that you feel that you understand, you want them to understand. Yeah. So make sure that there's no translation of that message, as it were, that the message that you want to give is the one they receive. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And make more money out of that as a result. Yeah. Good. Um, Any other? Use it, use it to really reinforce and build the brand. Yep. Brand building, really important. We'll come to that in a minute, actually. Yeah. Um, brand awareness definitely yeah yeah kind of trying to get out there without having to resort to so many ads spending so much money on ads kind of being more um organic in growth uh, yeah you, yeah yeah I, I think what kelly, well i think what kelly just said then is do it as cheaply as possible yeah so, so get your message across without spending money yeah well that's good isn't it yeah because that increases our profitability so um, any other thoughts from anybody else? Anybody got anything in particular other than growing your business, making more people aware of your brand, all of that? Nothing specific. Somebody's going to go, well, I tried the metaverse and it didn't work or anything like that. Has anybody tried anything on the metaverse yet? 
Okay, right. Well, no one. Let, let me share my screen and we'll start going through a few things here. So hopefully you can see that now. So we're going to look at the psychology of, um, of how you can benefit from the psychology of the internet. Now, uh, the internet is a pretty big thing. Um, this is a screenshot from two days ago. Um, this website, uh, internet statistics website, is constantly updated. Uh, so just a couple of days ago, there were 1.9 million billion websites. 1.9 million, 1.9 billion websites. Uh, you can see that you know 118 billion emails were sent at that time of day. So this was taken at 9:30 two days ago. So at this time in the morning, that's where we've got to. So there's be about five and a half billion users of the internet at the moment. But I'm showing you these figures because it's really difficult for us psychologically to grasp how big the internet is. Uh, it's really difficult to understand. Google tried 10 years ago, no, 11 years ago, uh, to work out how big the internet was because they index it all, of course. Well, most of it, they index most of it. Uh, so what they decided to do was to calculate how high the pile of paper would be if everything that they had indexed up until that point was printed out. Um, and I don't know if anybody wants to make any guesses of how high that pile of paper would be if everything they had indexed up to the year 2011 had been uh, printed out, how high that pile would be, because you, they know how many microns thick a sheet of paper is. They know how many characters they can fit on a sheet of paper. They know how many characters they've indexed. And so consequently, they could work out how high the pile of paper is. Does anybody really want to guess? I get, I feel like an auctioneer now, you know, going higher, higher, lower, lower. Hey, but yeah, Ollie, you look like you got your mic on. It's going to be an outrageous figure. It is an outrageous and figure. I've had a heavy week and I'm trying to think outrageously. Um, yep. To the moon and back. To the moon and back. Yeah. That's outrageous, is it? To the, at least to the sun. Mm -hmm. At least to the sun. Wouldn't the burn a, a paper burn like Gary? <laughs> yeah, the paper would burn if it went to the sun. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so we'd have destroyed the internet, I'm afraid, Gary. Uh, but if it, it, the pile of paper would go to Pluto and back 10 times. Wow. You know, how far is Pluto? Yeah, you can, we can't imagine how far Pluto is. Yeah, unless you're an astrophysicist. So it's just, and that's just up until 2011. And the internet is currently doubling in size in terms of the amount of information on the internet is currently doubling in size every eight days. So the internet is now twice the size as it was last Thursday, a week ago yesterday, twice the size. So that's a significant problem for us in business. So the, the big crucial difficulty we have in business is that awareness, getting those eyes, getting that attention, getting people to know about us is a, one of the biggest problems that businesses currently face because there is just so much stuff out there and so one of the so to get that awareness to get that brand established you have to commit much more effort than you would do if the internet didn't exist mm -hmm. if the internet didn't exist establishing your brand establishing that awareness was much easier uh, whereas now there is so much more competition not competition for you as a business but competition for the eyes and ears of the people who could be looking at you because there are so many more other interesting things for them to look at. So it's, it's a, a big problem for business. Uh, this is Usain Bolt um, at the London Olympics. And there he was at the London Olympics. I, I love this picture because here he is. He's in the 200 meter race. And you can see the um, board behind him. And you can see that we're 0.5 seconds into the race. And if you look at his feet, his uh, left leg is still behind the start line. So he is still behind the start, officially behind the start line because both legs aren't outside the start line. So he is still at the start, half a second into the race. And of course he completes this race in 19 seconds or whatever, you know, he's a pretty fast chap, isn't he? Yeah. So. Half a second, he's still at the start. And when you watch the Olympics or any athletics, you know, the gun goes and they're off. And you 
in less than a blink of an eye, you're not even aware that he started a little while ago, half a second ago. Uh, it's really important figure this. I love this because this is such an important figure. You are not consciously aware of anything until 0.7 seconds. So everything I am saying, I said, you know, if we forget the vagaries of the internet and the speed of transmission and so on, everything I said, I said 0.7 seconds earlier. So our entire life is lived in the past. Everything that happens to us is history by 0.7 seconds. You're not consciously aware of anything until 0.7 seconds. So we're not consciously aware. It's only because this picture was taken in a fragment of time. It's probably, you know, a photographer just pressed the button and loads of pictures went, happened. Um, we're not consciously aware of him leaving the start. We see him a bit later on. So that 0.5 seconds is really important because when we put people in a brain scanner and get them to use the internet, they have made up their mind whether or not to click on something. We can see the decision making happening. We know where decisions are made in the brain. We know the process by which the brain makes decisions. And we can see that process happening in a brain scanner at 0.56 seconds. So you give people a task to do, they do that task, and they have completed that decision in their brain as to where to go with that task in 0.56 seconds. That means they are deciding before they're consciously aware of even having made the decision. 0.56 seconds is the time in which people decide whether or not they're going to stick with your web page or go elsewhere. So almost all decisions that we make on the internet as to whether we're going to click on something, whether we're going to buy something, whether we're going to leave your website are made before anybody even knows what they're looking at. That's a big problem for us because attention is being, you may have heard, you may even say to people that our attention spans are lower than ever before. That's not true. The human attention span is the same as it's always been. It's not changing. What's changing is other things that can grab that attention from us. So there are more things that people can do to grab attention from us in that 0.56 of a second. So your website has really got a socket to them at the subconscious level, not at the conscious level. And that's the problem we see with many, many websites, that many websites take too long to get the information to people. We as human beings want everything to be completely convenient. So psychological convenience is doing things without our brain having to do too much effort. And so if we can make that decision in 0.56 of a second, our brain goes, that's exactly what we want to do. The reason our brain does that is because it's trying to preserve energy. Your brain uses about 25% to 30% of your calories in the day. So it's the most energy consuming part of your body. And so we use lots of energy to think, to do, to see, to listen, all of the kinds of things that our brain needs to do uh, is using lots of energy. So we want to conserve that energy because if we don't conserve that energy, you might not be able to escape from a burning building, for example, because your body hasn't got the energy. So your brain is protecting your survival by trying to get the brain to work in the least um, difficult way, the least the way that it conserves the energy the most it can. So if it can make that decision in 0.56 seconds, second, people will leave your website because their attention is being taken by something else. So really important that you engage with people immediately, make it really convenient for them on your website, that they get to your website, they can see in 0.56 seconds exactly what you expect them to do, exactly what it's about. If you think about Google, it's obvious. There's a search box in the middle. You don't need to be told what to do, just click in the search box. That's a decision that can be made in fractions of a second. Now, uh, who here has been speed dating? Come on, somebody's been speed dating, surely. Anybody been speed dating? Look at this, nobody puts in their hands up. Uh, I, I ask this every time I do a talk like this, I ask who's been speed dating. Nobody has ever been speed dating, uh, which it can't be true because the speed dating business in the UK is a you know, hundreds of millions of pounds business. So um, 
somebody, I'm sure somebody has been speed dating, but you get the concept of speed dating, don't you? Yeah, that you've got um, a group of, uh, let's give an example, a group of women who've turned up at this meeting place, hotel room, for example, um, and there's a dozen of them in the room and there's a dozen hapless guys outside um, and they're all queuing up to come in and they come in and they sit down in front of a woman uh, and they've got three minutes to have a chat and then the bell rings and they move on to the next woman and by the end of the evening every woman has seen every man and each woman then gets the chance to decide which man to date. Now when you ask men about this, about this speed dating, the men say how on earth can a woman make up her mind in three minutes due to date? And when you ask women, every woman says, why do we need that long? So the fact is, let's imagine you've got two guys. One, I'll call him Tarquin. Are there any Tarquins on the call before I offend any Tarquins? Yeah, I, let's call him Tarquin. Um, and Tarquin comes along and goes, hello, uh, I'm Tarquin. Um, uh, it's really good that I'm at this hotel down here in the Cotswolds because this isn't far from uh, my country pad. So I've come down to the country pad for the weekend. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I had to come in the Porsche because the Lamborghini is in for uh, service at the moment. It's actually having a lovely new audio system put into it. Um, and, you know, I've been able to get that because of the bonus I get as a uh, as a city banker, although bonuses in the city haven't been that good this year. Um, my best bonus a few years ago was £4 million. We're not getting anything like that these days, but, you know, the bonuses are still pretty good. Um, so, you know, when I'm not down here in the Cotswolds, I'm in my uh, flat at Chelsea Harbour. Um, I live next door to Michael Caine, actually, who lives at Chelsea Harbour. So, yeah, get on well with him. And then the bell rings and he moves on. And the next person comes along and goes, hello, I'm John, what's your name? And the woman goes, oh, my name's Angela. He goes, nice to meet you, Angela. What do you do, Angela? And Angela says, well, I'm a school teacher. And he says, oh, do you teach primary or secondary? And she says, well, I teach secondary. And he says, uh, that means you must teach a subject. What subject do you teach? And uh, she says, well, I teach chemistry. And he says, oh, is that fantastic where you, you know, create flashes and bangs and explosions in the lab and smells and things. The kids love it. She says, oh, yes, only today I was doing this thing. and It will turn the air blue in the classroom and the bell rings and they move on. Now, which one of those gets the date? Now, there will be women on the call who go Tarquin. I'll date Tarquin. He's got millions in the bank. I don't care that he's a git. I'll take the millions. But actually, research at King's College in London on speed dating yes, researchers have researched speed dating, um, shows us that actually it's John who gets the date. And when you think about it, Angela knows nothing about John. She doesn't know where he works. He knows everything about her, but he's the one who gets the date. And the reason he gets the date, because she knows one thing about him. And that one thing she knows is that he's interested in her. So this is a big clue for your website. Likeability. Are you showing the visitor that you like them? All too many websites are about the business. If your website is about your business and not about your customers, then I'm afraid you are demonstrating that you are Tarquin and that you are not John. The website has got to be about your customers and what they want and what they're interested in, not what you're interested in. I did a, a thing, I live not far from Reading. A few years ago, um, the local kind of accountancy um, organization and wanted me to talk about websites uh, to the, all the firms of accountants in Reading. Um, and I decided that I would show them that they were all very much Tarquins because what I did was I took all their websites, I deleted all the branding and all the identification of websites, taking out the pictures, and I just left the text, deleting the names of the companies. And then I asked them to identify whose website was whose. And they couldn't do it. They couldn't even identify their own website because every single website said the same thing. It said, you know, hello, we're a firm of accountants. We've been in Reading for 25 years. Uh, we've got X number of partners. And it was all about them. It was all kind of Tarquin kind of stuff. So we want your website to be about the people who your um, customers are. So you want to be liked. Uh, so here's an example of a website that likes people. This is Garment Shop. This is a uh, European German um, shop, and it's showing exactly who the customers are. If you're one of those two customers, a young man or a young woman, 
you know it's for you. You're recognizing you as a visitor to that website. I've got a couple of websites from your group that we're going to look at in a minute. I'm going to show you a couple of screenshots and we will see uh, that, there, that there is one uh, good example of similar pictures like this that shows it's about you, the customer. So um, a really good focus that people can see that it's about you. Well, as you look at this website, have you any idea who this website is about? Now, it's really difficult, isn't it? But this is a website for a firm of accountants in Bristol. Now, you, you look at that picture, you have no idea it's about accountancy. You have no idea it's about you as a business needing an accountant. So completely miss the mark. People look at that in 0.56 seconds. They make up their mind, this isn't about me. Uh, this is about people who go mountaineering. Um, and I don't go mountaineering because I run a florist shop in downtown Bristol. Um, I'm not looking for that. So completely miss the mark. Uh, so your website has to be about your customers. So it has got to focus on them, not your business. You've got to demonstrate you like them. So you've got to be convenient. It's got to be uh, getting to them in that 0.56 of a second. It's got to demonstrate you like them. And it's got to be focused on precisely what they want as customers. So if you don't know what it is they are looking for from your business, then you need to ask them. You need to do much more detailed market research these days than ever before. Uh, and so I think one of the biggest problems in business these days is a lack of market research to understand exactly what your customers are thinking and what they need from whatever you're doing on the internet. What many businesses provide on the internet is just a replacement for a printed brochure and it's not what the customers are looking for and what they want. So much more market research is needed. Your website really has to be about them. It has to focus on their needs, not on your needs. Uh, also, uh, one other thing about websites is uh, this piece of data that shows us how much material you need. And I mentioned earlier about grabbing that attention, grabbing the eyeballs of people uh, but actually there's a lot of myth about that so people say people only want short websites with lots of you know easy to click on various things but actually what the data shows us is this that the stuff that gets most shared the stuff that gets most um dwell where you're sitting on that page for longer than others uh, the stuff that gets higher up the search engines is the websites that are bigger and deeper and have more words. So when we look at social media sharing of um, blog posts, for example, this graph is showing us that, that the average share is much higher when the website, when the web page that's being shared is longer than 3,000 words. So one of the things about something like content marketing is that you've got to be much more informative. People are looking for much deeper richer information than they ever were before. The reason for that is that size of the internet. There is so much material available to people that they can get really picky about what they look at. So if you're running a business and you've got something online and you've only got 500 words on it, and they can see in 0.56 of a second that a competitor website has got a much longer page, they instinctively go to the longer page because that's also about our self-protection mechanism, because the more information that's available to us, the more we trust it, the more we uh, realize that it's going to help us. That's a subconscious factor that's happening. So long pages, lots of data, lots of information, in-depth information. Amazon did uh, several tests on this several years ago. Uh, and you can look at Amazon pages now and they go on and on and on. There's all kinds of extra pieces of information. The longer the pages, the bigger the sales. Uh, so people are weighing your website by the pound. Uh, so if it's heavy, if there's lots of stuff in, into it, if each page is long with lots of information, you get more people um, wanting to connect with it. They can see in 0 .1, one of the things we do in 0.56 of a second is to see how big the website is. We're making assessments. I'll show you when I look at some screenshots in a second. What Graham, just a quick so, question. Sorry, Graham, yeah. just a quick question going back to that. Is that because yeah.
people don't like talking anymore. Because if you go if you go to a website and it's like, oh, go here and then contact us and then get into an interaction, is that because people would rather go, yeah, I like this. Now I'm going to read about it because I ain't got to get in touch with them until I've made a decision. No, it's not that. It's that um, we, as our subconscious brain is constantly trying to protect us, as I said earlier, it's trying to make sure that we have all the information we need to make that appropriate decision. So what happens is the more information that's available, your brain goes, well, I need a bit more. So uh, in the olden days before the internet, and you, all you had was maybe a couple of leaflets and a brochure for your business, people would look at the leaflet and then look at the brochure and then they would call you for extra information. Now uh, they look at the your website and they want in-depth information because their brain is going, I need as much information as possible. So what we're doing all the time is trying to seek more and more information. This is one of the problems the internet has given us as a society, that the more information we have, your brain goes, ah, there might be another bit. There might be another bit. So your brain is constantly saying it needs more, 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 more. So people will phone you, they will talk to you, but that's when they've exhausted reading hundreds of documents or thousands of words about something. And if you think about your own behavior, we all do this. We all check, you know, if there's a download for a PDF, you'll download the PDF. You might not read every word, you'll skim it, uh, or you might go, oh, well, they, they must know what they're talking about because they've got a 10 page PDF about their product. Uh, whereas the other website has only got, you know, half a page of web. So you're, it's just reassurance that the information is protecting you. It's about a survival instinct. So the more, uh, the more information you have, uh, the more people want. They weigh it by the pound. Yes. Um, There's a question the from other thing Tony, Graham. Yeah. yeah. Hi, yeah. Sorry, I didn't see that, Tony. Yeah. Sorry, no, it's okay. Hi. Um, so I just I would like to caveat though a little bit because yeah. I agree, long format. Um, but if that content is bad, it's not gonna do oh. you can't just put lots yeah. on for the sake of lots on because I see people sorry, I mean yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> So I just want people to Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. caveat that, yeah. okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, sorry, yeah, I didn't mean that, you know, you can put 4,000 words of garbage on there. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be relevant. It's got to be um, quality. Um, it's got to be appropriate. It, you know, the, it's it's got to be good stuff. Yeah, because otherwise you could just, you know, do a PDF of, nursery rhymes and <laughs> that wouldn't work kind of thing or or just yeah you're absolutely right Tony it's got to be good good stuff yeah so um yeah you can't just put any old garbage up just to say well here's 4,000 words um yeah so you can't do that um Jeff Bezos uh, said this uh that if we have um four and a half million customers we shouldn't have one store we should have four and a half million stores and you know each of us who go on to Amazon the, what we look at is different for each of us because they're looking at your search history, they're looking at what you've bought in the past, all kinds of other factors that they're looking into to present you with a different experience than uh, what everybody else does. Um, and so the more we can customize our website uh, to our specific uh, audience, the better it's going to be. That means if you've got more than one audience, you might need to direct them through search engine optimization or through social media to those specific landing pages on your website because then it's much more customized to what they want rather than assuming everybody's going to go to the home page and find their way around they're not going to do that it's going to take them too long they want convenience they want it straight away so you need to do the directing to the right place Here's uh, some data from a study that um, I looked at. So 77% of web users uh, expect their web pages to be personalized to them, uh, but only 27% of websites actually provide any form of personalization. Now those 27% of websites that provide personalization are the websites that we use most of the time. So your experience of the web is dominated by um, personalization, with, uh, whether it's Google, whether it's uh, Amazon, whether it's Facebook, everything is personalized to you. 
So your daily experience of the internet is it's personalized. So that pre-frames our brain that we expect everything else to be personalized. So when we then land on a website which can't be personalized to us, we get a, a little bit of cognitive dissonance where it doesn't quite gel. It doesn't mean, doesn't work the same way as what we are used to for most of the time. So having personalized websites where to the individual, uh, then that's really important. Uh, so when you think about it, you know, you tailor it to the, the people who are going to be uh, turning up. So we get um, higher sales on websites that are customized than websites that are not customized to the individual. Um, and then there's one other thing. I did some work uh, a few years ago, as you can tell, in the fashion industry. Um, so, um, but I worked with um, a guy from ASOS who was their international sales director. And I remember we were uh, sitting down at lunch at one of these events that we were running together. Um, and he drew this graph on a, a paper napkin form. Because um, I was talking to him about how did ASOS take off? Now, if you don't know the history of ASOS, ASOS stands for As Seen On Screen. It was started by a marketing agency who specialized in product placement in movies. Um, and so their job was to place a product in a movie um, and then benefit from that. So what they did as a marketing agency was say, well, why don't we sell online the things that we are placing in a movie? So they would place, I don't know, a Rolex watch into, you know, a James Bond movie, for example. So they would then sell that watch on their website. And what they discovered was over the first few years was that the things that sold the most were fashion items. So, you know, the dress that Angelina Jolie wore in a movie, they'd be selling. Um, and so people wanted fashion. So they concentrated on fashion. Uh, so they changed their name from As Seen On Screen to ASOS, and they stuck with fashion. But in the first few years, the growth of their business was pretty slow. Uh, you know, it was okay. Um, ASOS, by the way, now is the world's biggest online fashion stores. So they're selling about two billion pounds worth of fashion online. It's the biggest single online fashion store in the world. Um, but it really started to take off, he said, when they wrote, when they created blogs on their website. So when they were not just a sales website, when they started putting blogs on their website and they got fashion journalists to start writing for them, uh, that's when the sales really picked up. And that's because they were then demonstrating to their customers that they had knowledge about their subject. They weren't just a shop. They were people who understood fashion. And that gave people more reassurance in the brand. The next thing, the next big kick uh, was when they produced their ASOS magazine. And so they produced a magazine. And when that magazine came out, that added even more credibility to them, demonstrating knowledge. So people want to trust your business and they will only trust your business if you demonstrate that you are experts in your area. That means your website has got to be full of stuff that is not about the products or services that you sell, but is about your sector, is about the world your customers inhabit. So ASOS is full of fashion blogs. In fact, ASOS now now employ more fashion journalists than any of the top fashion magazine houses. So they've got a big group of fashion journalists filling their website with articles about fashion, which then gets people to understand what's going on in fashion and gives their, gives their customers more trust in the ASOS brand. Uh, so I always remember they, he, you know, he scribbled this graph down to show me what had happened uh, with their sales and they credit their success to the start of their blog. Uh, so they were doing very well, but they credit the uh, massive uptake in their sales to their blog. So really important that you show your website has got knowledge. So what you might not have realized is I've just taken you through five steps, five psychological steps here, that you've got to demonstrate convenience. You've got to get your website to work very quickly to hit that 0.56 seconds that people can see what they need to do, see what to press, see what to do straight away. Uh, you've got to show you like them, a bit like the speed dating example. You've got to demonstrate to your customers that you like them. Uh, you have got to be informative. You have got to fill it with material, make those long 
pages so that there is plenty of information for people to then um, make sure that they are getting enough information to get that security level that they require. You've got to customize it to them. They expect it to be for them individually. And you've got to demonstrate that you've got tons of knowledge uh, by having lots of material that isn't about your business, is not about your products or services, but is about the sector in which you work so that people can trust your business. So I call that click. Um, and it, those are five psychological factors that will enable you to gain more business and convert more customers. Um, so uh, these are some reasons why you need to think about what you do for each of those things. So if you are needing to be fast, you need to be that convenient bit, you need clear design, you need fast payment systems, you need all of those things. Uh, if you think of Amazon, you can buy in one click. Now, no other website in the world currently can set that up because the one click purchasing system is patented and that patent is owned by Amazon. Uh, it's only patented in the United States. Uh, they applied for a European patent for it and it was rejected uh, on two occasions. So they've given up. But the fact <coughs> is that you cannot do it because if your website is available in the United States, you will then be uh, in, you know, in, and um, you'll be breaking the law because you will be using patented technology that's patented in the United States. So unless you can prevent your website from appearing in the United States, you cannot use one click technology. So, but two clicks is the best we can do. Uh, to be informative, you need to do these things. You need to do your web analytics. You need to do your market research, as I said earlier, to find out what people really want. What kind of information are they really seeking from you? Uh, you've got to um, do that to get you the likability and to lead you to what kind of blogs you're going to write uh, for the informative part. Uh, you need a CRM system. You need to make sure that your um, people, customers can set up accounts so that they can customize uh, the page and have everything delivered to them uh, based on uh, the various factors that are important to them as individuals. And to fulfill the knowledge, you've got to do lots of research into the business sector. You have got to start producing material that represents your business sector so that you can demonstrate you have real knowledge. You've got to go to industry events, write white papers, run events yourself, all those kind of things that can help demonstrate that you have that knowledge. So there's lots of things to do uh, in order to make it all work. So here then is a website. Uh, now, I know the owner of this website is on this call. Um, does the owner of the website want to put their hand up and say hello? She actually isn't, but a member oh, okay. of her staff. Uh, Stephanie is, is stepping in for Julia, though. Hello, Stephanie. Hi. Uh, did, are you responsible for this website, or um, is somebody else responsible? Not, not specifically, no, I'm the digital marketer and social media, so I do more of the social okay. media side, but I'm just stepping yeah. in to do okay. now. Yeah, because the, this website is at the top, you can see the um, menu options that go across the top. And th this is set up in Shopify, uh, uh, which is a, a template system for online retail and is probably the most, um, successful of those uh, the, their nearest competitor is a german company called epages um so those two dominate the market in these kind of uh, websites so they're template based systems but really important here is the bit at the top uh, where you've got various menu items here and what happens it you don't realize you're doing this but when you visit a website your mouse is doing something so we can, there are various systems where we can track what your eyes are doing and what your mouse is doing. And you're, because you're doing this at the pre-conscious level, you're doing this within that 0.7 seconds, you don't know you're doing it. But what people are doing is running their mouse across that menu item, menu list to see uh, what might drop down. Um, and what happens here is that you can already see there are lots of things to look at. So you can see there are lots of things to look at. Uh, and when you look at, uh, there's a couple of drop down arrows, people will put their um, mouse on that drop down arrow and we'll see some other things coming down. So what happens is psychologically in that 
prior to that 0.7 seconds when they're consciously aware of what they're looking at already their brain has been told there's tons of stuff here there's plenty of things to look at and what that means is that they already begin to perceive this website as superior to a website that maybe only have three menu items or four menu items so one of the crucial things is this shows us that what we need to do is to demonstrate there's plenty of stuff to look at and that's why it's really important that you have horizontal menus not vertical menus uh, that you um, have lots of drop downs so that people can drop down and can see in that 0.7 second there's plenty of stuff to look at so they're making that initial kind of um, assessment uh, that is full of information uh, what is missing here uh, is the ability to log in um, and customers can do that yes yeah? so you they can set up accounts so shopify has got plugins to allow you to have them so what you need is to make sure that they can log in and customize what they see um, and so that's something that i think could be added to this uh, website so uh, that's really important uh, you you're the you do social media on this yeah definitely yeah uh, what about your customers can your customers do social media can they promote this page uh not currently no ah so you're having to do all the promotion yourself rather than getting your customers to help you yeah yeah um because i can't share this because there's no facebook button or anything like that and that would be really helpful yeah the more we can get our customers to help us the better so user generated content which might not necessarily be user generated on your own website but user generated on social media is really important because that increases our trust uh, we spoke earlier about the need for awareness the more you can spread this the more eyeballs you can get to see it across social media the better it's going to be uh, but you need to give your customers the option to be able to do that um, don't worry you're not alone i was invited by one of the top um insurance comparison sites uh because they were the market leaders they still are the market leaders uh, they own 40 percent of the market they're a 700 million pound turnover business so they're doing very well they know what they're doing um but their social media was not getting much attention at all and they couldn't understand it why they've got millions of customers but there was very little social media activity so they called me in to help them understand why they were not getting any social media activity i was able to go so i was sitting in front of you know the sales director the marketing director the, the board you know, c-suite people um and I said, well, it's really quite easy why you're not getting much activity. And they said, well, why? We've been scratching our heads and trying to work out what's wrong. I said, well, there isn't a single link to Twitter or Facebook or Pinterest or, you know, Instagram or anything on your website. So they'd got, you know, a few thousand pages on their website and not one of the pages had a link to get to social media. That meant their customers couldn't help promote them. So one of the crucial things is that if social media is important to you as a business then you need to give your customers the ability to share you rather than make them do the work this is back to convenience so if i can see straight away there's a facebook button to click to share it that's much more convenient i'm not going to copy and paste go to facebook myself do the work that's less convenient so people won't do it so we need to increase the convenience here for social media uh, people look for social media icons in two places on a website they look at the bottom of the page and they look on the top right of the page so eye tracking studies show us top right so you've got those two icons in the top right the search and the shopping basket icon i put the social media icons there i'm not sure if the template that you're using can do that at shopify but there will be a way of of, of doing it I think so, actually we've um this is I think this is the old website we've just launched a new website all right okay um, and I don't even think that's with Shopify but I'll have a chat with her about that um, okay. yeah but the principles whether you're yeah. with Shopify or whatever the principles of making it convenient for people is what I think you need to do I think the 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 you know the extensive menu options that's really important because that gives people much more um surety 
uh, about your website. They can begin to trust it more because there's lots of information there. So here's another website. Um, now, uh, I know the owner of this website is here. Yep, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's me, says <laughs> Kelly. Um, so um, this is also a Shopify website, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, um, yeah. if I remember correctly. Um, again, so we've got the same things here about the social media. It's um, not easy to find. Okay. Uh, so we need to make yeah. that much more convenient uh, for people. But the crucial thing here about the picture that we see is that the text and the picture, uh, people will actually see, interestingly, from a psychological perspective, people see the text subconsciously before they see the picture. Um, so we know that from a thing called the Stroop test. So Mr. Stroop, who um, tested things, you may well have done this in business meetings, for example, where people show you a series of words in color, but the words are the wrong color. Mm -hmm. So they will show you the word red, but the ink they're showing you in is in blue. And they show you the word blue, but it's colored green. So you may have seen that kind of test. That's called the Stroop test. And you're required to say what color the word says. Um, and sorry, what color you see. And what people say is what color the word says. So they actually should be saying blue, but they say red because they're reading the word, not seeing the color. So it tells us that people read the words before they see the images. So here people will see those words. So that's really, that phrase is really important to your customers. Yeah. And then they see those images and they can identify that that's me. That's really important. So this image and that picture will really show people that this is for me. So this is shown real likability for people. And I think that's really important uh, that you show that likability. They go, this is about me. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, uh, what you're telling them straight away, your first menu item is shop. So you're saying, this is about me. And then the next thing they look up at the menu and they go, oh, blimey, she wants me to buy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So whereas what we need is, um, maybe a learn and blog and mission and shop last okay uh, because people read from left to right yeah and so at least in english language yeah there are plenty of countries that read right to left but we read left to right and so that means that uh, unfortunately you're putting a negative into people's mind because they haven't yet made the decision they want to buy anything okay so you're telling them this is all about you so yeah. i'm afraid you're tarping here yeah, but yeah, you're saying this is all about me. I want you to buy stuff. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Whereas actually they've come to this website because it they have this issue that they want to find out about how they can deal with it. Yeah. You see, you tell them all of that in your blog and your learning bit, and then they will buy. Yeah. So you can increase your conversion rate simply by moving the shop to the right hand side and changing the menu the other way around, make it more about them. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so uh, we'll think quickly about then what the metaverse is. Uh, anybody know what it is? Um, only from uh, recent stuff. I mean, uh, AR, VR, uh, probably living outside what reality we are now. Yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah, I'm sure there's more. Yeah. There's, sure there's more, yeah. Anybody else got any ideas what the metaverse is? Do you think um, Metaverse came out more popularly recently when Facebook changed its name to Meta? Uh, interestingly, it might not be able to keep its name as Meta because there is already another American business called Meta, which they had not done their research on, who are currently suing Facebook to say you can't use it. Um, so, so they've changed their branding, they've changed their name. Uh, they hadn't done you know, proper business research to find out whether they could use it. But anyway, because they want to use the metaverse because they have a virtual reality headset company, uh, Oculus Drift. So they, that company, they want us to experience the internet through VR. Um, and so they want us to live in this alternative world. Uh, interestingly, Facebook's success is based entirely on copying other people. Every time they do something and change something, they copy other people. So Facebook and Instagram, 
introduced stories after Snapchat. So Snapchat produced, were the first company to produce online stories. Uh, they saw how brilliantly that was doing. So they copied them and did it. The original Facebook is a copy of earlier websites, things like Friends Reunited that uh, were doing much the same. So what they do is copy, but do it better. Uh, they're currently changing it to give us short form video um, so that they're copying TikTok. So TikTok has become hugely successful, largely in Asia. So most of TikTok is in Asia, um, much less TikTok around here, uh, but hugely successful globally. Um, and so now Facebook is changing to do something else. This is the first thing that Facebook is introducing where they are not copying success. So everything they've done for the last 20 years is copying other people's success. The metaverse is copying other people's failure. Uh, so they think they're going to do it better. Um, this website is still going. This is one of the first um, metaverse concepts that came out about I don't know, 15 or so years ago. It's called Second Life. I don't know if anybody's ever been on Second Life. Uh, so Second Life, when it was introduced, um, got to 21 million people at its peak. It now has less than half a million. Um, so it's a tiny diddly squat part of the internet. Um, and you can create an avatar and be on Second Life. I've got an avatar on Second Life. I created it 10 years ago. As far as I know, my avatar is still sitting by a riverbank. Um, but, you know, I've not been there since. Um, so Second Life has failed. Um, it's not really successful at all. Half a million people is nothing on the internet these days. Uh, so it hasn't got. So the metaverse is a marketing concept introduced by Facebook because they have this belief that we are all going to be engaging in this virtual reality world. From a psychological perspective, I don't think it's going to happen much beyond people who are interested in virtual reality gaming and so on. And we can tell from all of that that actually there aren't that many people interested in it. Um, and so, and why? Because it's not a real world experience. Psychologically, we know it's fake. So actually, from a business perspective on Second Life, Adidas, for example, made their first online million in Second Life many, many years ago. They no longer sell stuff. So you could buy trainers for your avatar from Adidas. Uh, they made a million dollars in the space of a few months doing it. Uh, so there are opportunities for business on the metaverse, but people can only buy something that they can use in the metaverse. They can't use it in the real world. So it's an interesting concept. So I think what we're seeing at the moment is that people saying the word metaverse without really knowing what it means. And then what they're saying is we're doing something on the metaverse. What they really mean is we're doing something on the Internet. So the words are becoming interchangeable with each other. The real metaverse, the place where it's based around virtual reality and augmented reality uh, is going to be not the place we do most of our business. Even now with the internet as popular as it is, most business happens in the real world. Even though online shopping has increased dramatically in the last couple of years, particularly, still most shopping is done in the real world. So, I think we need to take the metaverse with a significant pinch of salt. Uh, Graham, just a quick uh, one. <coughs> Sorry, quick yeah. one on that. Could you see like a hybrid version <clears throat> where you've got a pair of Adidas on your feet and it automatically uploads to the metaverse? And when you get yeah. home, you can do activities that you yeah. can't do out in the cold, etc. Yeah, to be fair, that's what um, Mark Zuckerberg has been talking about. He's been talking about this hybrid world where you can do those kind of things. But that's a long way off. The, you know, the, the ability for the technology to do that is still a long way down the road yet. So, um, I mean, it'll come, but it's not going to be, for most businesses, it's not going to be relevant at all. You know, I can't imagine many law firms or accountancy firms or, you know, real estate agents doing their business on the metaverse. That's real world business. Oh, sorry, one more question. But if you imagine yeah. like this call now, we're all sitting there yeah. and we've got our visual faces and people don't like it, uh, etc. 
it'd be a lot yeah. more fun if it was we was all standing in a room where we could look around and see each other, etc. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, yeah, so the whole one of the next bits of technology is using holographic technology. So you, if you've been to YouTube, there are some videos of uh, people doing uh, duets at concerts with holograms on stage with them. Um, in the uh, one of the Obama elections, uh, I think the second one, a CNN interviewed uh, Obama as a hologram. Um, so he was in one studio, the interviewer was in CNN studio, and it looked like to us as the viewer that uh, Obama was in the same studio as the interviewer. It wasn't. They're uh, completely different places, all done by holographic technology. The problem we have with these technologies is the bandwidth. So if we're all doing that virtual reality in a meeting like this, you know, Zoom at the moment consumes a lot, a lot of the bandwidth across the world. Um, and we start adding all these technological layers. We haven't yet got the infrastructure to allow that to happen. So these are certainly ideas that technology people are talking about. And certainly, you know, the infrastructure companies are thinking, what, how can we do that in the future? So it's, it's not something we're going to benefit from in our business in the next couple of years. OK, well, I've got to the end of what I was going to say and talk about. Um, so I will stop sharing the screen at this point. Um, and, you know, any more questions, ideas, criticisms, thoughts? That was uh, awesome, um, Graham. Thank you very much. Has anyone got any questions for Graham whilst, whilst we've got him? It's a good opportunity to think about Kelly. Sorry, just one quick question, Graham. It was brilliant. I've made so many notes. Thank you so much. Um, in regards to as much information as possible, would that be in um, video form as well? Or does that help with with um, when making sales or you know brand awareness? Yeah, and you need a variety of formats. Is the answer. Um, and so when we look at what people engage with most, they engage most with text. Okay. So text is the most important thing. Yeah. Um, video is important, um, but it's got to be either very short or very long. Uh, right. So what happens is that, you know, you, you're sitting in your office, you can look at a quick two minute video without disturbing your day very much. Mm -hmm. You, if you if it's a 20 minute video you're thinking this is taking too much time i've got emails to do i've got things to do so you don't yeah. watch a 20 minute video whereas if it's a two hour video you put an appointment in your diary to do it at seven o'clock tonight or whatever so actually very short or very long don't do 10 minute 20 minute videos they're they're not gonna yeah. do anything for you people don't watch them uh so the i mean they do watch them but not in the same numbers <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I'm okay. not saying that. yeah. So the, the data from YouTube shows us that it's the very short stuff and the very long stuff that gets the bulk of the viewers. So, um, you know, and when you look at TikTok, you know, it's 30 second videos is getting huge amounts of attention. So keep it short, um, but don't forget the text. Uh, don't yeah. forget audio. Podcasts are dramatically increasing in popularity a huge rise in popularity in podcasts mm -hmm. and the reason for that is convenience so we come back to this psychological convenience all the time it's convenient to listen to a podcast yeah. because you can listen to it whilst you're out on a run you can listen to it in the gym you can listen to it um, in the car you can't watch a video in the car or you shouldn't um, well unless you're a passenger of course you can't you, you know it's difficult to watch a video on a run uh, but you can just put your headphones in and listen to a, a podcast so audio really in, dramatically increasing in importance okay. jonathan thank you oh hi there um great talk um yeah great really insightful stuff um so i'm the founder of a company which has got a two-sided marketplace and when you were talking about um, making it specific to your your customer and, yeah. and, and customizing on the landing page when when <coughs> someone comes to my site, it's uh, I'm trying to think about okay how do I how do I make it so that I can if I've got um, the customer if I've got one side um, a property investor for example who comes onto the yep. site it looks it's 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 serving a purpose for them or if I've got a 
um, a, a legal professional or an accountant that comes on, which is the business side, because it's about connecting the two. It's how do yeah. I present it in that way? And I'm thinking I probably need to have, yeah, multiple versions, right? But it's, it's just yeah. how to sort of make that flow, make it super convenient, super low friction. Yeah, so you're right. It's about um, addressing it in such a way that it is dealing with the, those two different sides of the equation. Um, so you're presenting material that's relevant to them. And that means what you need to do is work out how do they get to the bit that's relevant to them? So what are the pathways by which they're going to get there? So that might mean different um, activity on social media that reaches them in different ways. Uh, different maybe, you know, uh, when you've got business cards that you're at a business networking event, you know, different business cards that point them to different pages. So lots of kind of planning as to how do you get people to the, the places you want to get them to. But when they land on whatever you're getting them to, it should be what they're really interested in. So rather, rather than then, you know, having a website, where they have to work it out for themselves because that's not convenient and they're going to go, well, I haven't got time to work it out for myself. Uh, yeah, makes sense. That's uh, it's just even just on like, the, the business card side of things, yeah. like, yeah, that makes, you can have like a QR code and if it's, yeah, business, quite. If it's, if it's a service side, then yeah. you can give them that business card. Yeah. That yeah. that, uh, specific and you had a business on Second Life. Yeah, I did. I, I technically still do, but it's very much passive. I actually was yeah, quite, yeah. selling uh, sneakers and clothing and accessories. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it has died down uh, significantly yeah, quite. now. Yeah. 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 But yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. Good. Anything else? I think that might be it, Graham. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah.